Hi everyone, and welcome to part three of our Game Components Tutorials. At the end of part two, we had created our basic game loop. It's not doing anything super complex, but at least we had the template set and we can start introducing some more components. In this tutorial, we'll focus specifically on the clock. And when I say clock, in this context, I don't mean the kind that hangs on your wall and tells you the time of day. I'm talking more specifically about a game clock. So we'll introduce the concept of a game clock and what it's used for in a program. And then we'll add a Pygame game clock to our game. Okay, so for starters, what is a clock? Again, from a game standpoint. Well, a game clock is used to track time within a game. So this could be the time elapsed since the beginning of the game. It could be the amount of time taken to perform a single task. But more often than not, it's used to set the number of frames per second, or FPS for short. Now, if you've done any kind of serious gaming, this may well be a figure that you're familiar with. Very often there's two that gamers will focus on. One is ping, which is more or less the speed of your internet connection, and the other is the FPS or the number of frames per second. So what this number means is essentially it's the number of frames that are rendered each second. From a game loop standpoint, this is really the amount of times that loop runs per second. So if you remember within a game loop, we have the three phases, the input phase, the update phase, and the render phase. Well, programs run really, really quickly, so this could happen many, many times per second. By setting the FPS, we determine exactly how many times these checks will happen each second. So setting these numbers higher or lower will have an effect on the performance. For example, if we set the FPS to be quite high, we'll get smoother gameplay because we're just doing more things per second. So we don't have to make these large jumps in say movement or updating or inputs or anything. So we will get smoother gameplay, but of course we are doing more things per second. So that's going to demand more from the CPU. We will see a pretty steep decrease in performance if we're trying to do a lot of other CPU intensive processes as well. And sometimes this just doesn't really work and the game crashes because of it. Conversely, a lower frame rate will lead to more stuttering because we have to move in larger increments or we have to perform fewer checks per second. So the game will just look a lot less smooth. However, it's a lot more CPU friendly because we are demanding fewer actions per second from the CPU. And so depending on how new or old or sophisticated your system is, this might be something that we have to take into consideration. So games are always trying to balance the FPS out. Obviously we want it as high as possible because that gives a smoother, better experience, but then some CPUs just can't handle it. Okay, so we know roughly speaking what a clock is. If we still don't know, it will become a little clearer once we implement it in our code. So let's head over there and get started. All right, so this is where we left off last time. We had just created our basic game loop here, not doing anything terribly exciting, but at least we have kind of annotated it to tell you exactly what each line of code is doing. You'll also note I have an archive.py file what I'm going to do from here on out is I'll take all the code that we write at the end of one tutorial and stick it into archive.py. So this will be a really long file with all of the code by the end. That way we have a complete archive of all of the steps that we took along the way. And of course, I'll label it appropriately. Okay, great. So we do still want all of this code in main.py, but again, some of the other code that we write in each section, we won't want so that I'll stick in archive.py. Cool. So because we are going to be using our clock within our game loop, it's a good idea to create it before the game loop, but of course after the pygame.init because the clock is a pygame idea. So we'll create a variable just called clock, and this will be a pygame.time.clock object like so. So this belongs in the time module, that's why we have to do pygame.time, and it is an object of type clock. Okay, so the perhaps most important thing that we'll do with a clock throughout the game is to call clock.tick. You'll also note that the parameter there is a frame rate, which defaults to an integer value of zero. This is where we can set the frame rate, and clock.tick will essentially force the clock onto the next tick. 
Okay, so the frame rate just kind of slows things down or speeds things up to set the appropriate frame rate. Typically, actually, we wouldn't put it here. We would put this call in our while loop at the very, very end of that loop. Okay, so we don't want it within the for loop, but we do want it at the very end of our while loop. And then we set the FPS. Typically, somewhere around 60 is a pretty good measure. The more advanced systems might go up to 120, but again, that's kind of only the state of the art, really powerful CPUs that can handle that for advanced games. Now, other than clock.tick, perhaps the only two methods that we would really be interested in from a Pi game clock might be the clock.getTime, which gets the uh, previous clock's time, and the FPS, which gets the uh, clock's current FPS. So I'll just demonstrate what those look like. It is previous time might be equal to clock.getTime, like so. Okay, and then the FPS is equal to the clock dot get FPS like so. And you know what, I just to demonstrate these, I'm just going to print them out for you. I guess actually what we'll do is we'll just do that and then print out previous time. And then we'll print out the FPS and this you don't have to run along with me. I just want to show you exactly what this looks like. We have our while loop started. So let's go ahead and run this. We'll just print out a bunch of numbers. Yeah, there we go. So we can see that the current time is going up and FPS is somewhere around 60 and uh, it can fluctuate a little bit depending on uh, kind of what's going on in the CPU. But uh, otherwise, yeah, that's uh, exactly what's happening there. So because this uh, can be difficult to stop running, that's why I encourage you to hopefully you didn't start running this as well. Uh, this was more just for me to demonstrate to you. Okay, so that is it for this tutorial. That is a brief introduction into the clock. And in the next tutorial, we'll introduce something a little bit more interesting so that we actually have something to run and see uh, on screen there. Okay, so thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.